Greetings. I'm Julie Martin. I'm the naturopathic provider here at the Center for Holistic Medicine in River Woods, um, Illinois. Um, this is the first of our educational lecture that we're going to broadcast on our uh, web page. So look forward to other uh, um, coming events as well. It's okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So today we're going to talk about gluten, uh, grains, and gut health. It's actually going to be more than just gut health, but as we go through this, we'll explain it a little bit more in depth. Next slide, please. So what is gluten? Gluten is a protein, a complex protein composed of two constituents called gliadin and glutalin. It's found in wheat, barley, rye, and triticale. Oats are oftentimes contaminated with gluten, especially when they're manufactured in a plant where wheat is also processed. Um, it's known to give wheat its elasticity, and so it's important in terms of um, making wheat uh, actually expand into the bread that we know. Um, it allows the rising process, in other words. It's often the base of imitation meats. It's also used as a stabilizing agent, which is why it's found in many products, and you need to be very cautious. We'll go through that as we go through. Next slide, please. All right, so one of the things that we're looking at is how much more prevalent the gluten sensitivities have become. Um, one issue is probably in terms of human evolution itself. The Paleolithic diet, which is a diet based on the hunter-gatherers that was not in All right, so yes, many more people are affected by wheat allergy than the true celiac disease, although all of these gluten sensitivities are on the rise. Um, oftentimes also, too, without going through the specifics of the testing, you can go through a dairy, an elim elimination diet um, where you eliminate the food from your uh, diet completely for 10 days, allow the body to heal a little bit, and then re-challenge eating that uh, wheat uh, four times for a series of four to five days and see what kind of symptoms arise. Again, wheat allergies oftentimes are not necessarily gastrointestinal but have asthma or eczema also associated with them. Um, the illicit testing is really more accurate in terms of the delayed uh, and immediate responses. Skin pricking only tests the IgE, which oftentimes then will miss the IgG, which is the more common response in terms of the allergy. What's illicit, uh, illicit testing? Illicit testing is, um, stands for, and now I can't remember. Um, well, it's a blot test. It's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a... Um, it's a special type of blood test? It's a blood test that people, that the antibody to the antibody has to be present that's uh, uh, a laboratory response and then a lot of uh, paper is looked at to see how big. It is a subjective lab response in terms of somebody has to look at that and say it's not a hundred points, it's you know a point, it's three plus on how I'm seeing what your response is. So it has a little bit of a subjective criteria to it. Does that make sense? Which so do you give more yeah. credibility, IgE or IgG, in terms of? Well, you, you don't really see that many IgE responses. You're more credible in terms of IgG, and that it's a delayed response. The IgE responses are more associated with true allergies that are um, anaphylactic in terms of an immediate response, and that's more like a peanut allergy. So um, being cautious about how we um, characterize the difference between these, the delayed response is a more common response. You're not going to have that anaphylactic, I need to get to the hospital or EpiPen immediately. Okay, next slide, please. Um, so gluten sensitivity is a whole new then classification of the three sensitivities to gluten, the celiac. All right, so the gluten sensitivity in terms of the exclusion, we're going to rule out that none of these other tests that we've talked about need to be positive. So it's simply giving up wheat so that you can see that there's an improved response in the body for a number of different symptoms we'll go through. Next slide, please. So gluten sensitivity, abdominal pain might be present, eczema or a skin rash, a headache is also present. There's a lot of neurological conditions that can be related to gluten sensitivities. Foggy mind, fatigue, diarrhea, depression, anemia, numbness, or paresthesias. Um, joint pain. So as you can see, there's a number of things that could simply be improved by uh, giving up gluten. Next slide, please. I notice you don't have ADD on there. Is it's it good. related? It's coming up. Coming up. Yep. Um, so further classification again, any kind of uh, gastrointestinal, so diarrhea, um, dyspepsia, or just gas and bloating after meals. Um, 
steatorrhea, which refers to uh, indigestion of complete indigestion of fat. So the sensitivity can affect all kinds of ability of our body to digest other foods as well. Um, gastroparesis, which is also more common and is true celiac associated with a type 1 diabetes, but a slowing down of the movement through the stomach in terms of a stubbornness, which puts a put stubbornness of the digestive cascade to really be engaged all due to this, some sort of inflammatory response in the gut itself. So GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease, irritable bowel syndrome, esophagitis or inflammation of the esophageal tract. Um, eosinophilic esophagitis is a more, a more and more common diagnosis that's being come up and IgE is oftentimes, again, as you said, associated with that um, uh, immediate response, but in terms of white blood cells, the eosinophilic deposition in the, Esophagus has to do with an impossible allergic reaction. Um, canker sores, aphthous ulcers, vomiting, nausea, intestinal bleeding, so a wide range of digestive symptoms. Next slide, please. Um, other ones that we might not even think about are actually cancers. Hepatitis T cell lymphoma, colon cancer has been associated. So. Further again, more, more and more complex digestive improve, uh, uh, diseases can be improved by just simply eliminating gluten from the diet. Oh, go. Next slide. Uh -huh, please. All right, so giving up cakes and pies and pastas, it doesn't sound like very fun, but if you think about healing all those 130 different symptoms that were associated with your sweet tooth, you might have a better response in terms of giving up these kinds of things. Even seasoned rice mixes, anything that has seasoning in it, oftentimes as a stabilizer is going to have gluten in it. It might not necessarily be listed on there. All right, salad dressings. Bouillon cubes are famous as a stabilizer for having a lot of gluten in them. Um, anything that's, again, the seasoned, self-basting turkeys, rice mixes, gravy, even french fries can be coated with um, a small um, a bit of gluten to, to allow the uh, oil to adhere to the surface of the potato. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be almost all the time. All right, and malted, the word malt unfortunately also refers to gluten, so anything that's malted you want to avoid. Beer, ale, porter, stout, there are beers out there now that are made gluten-free, but um, it's difficult to find truthfully. Modified food storage, but not necessarily cornstarch, dextrin, not maltodextrin, natural flavors, not all natural flavors, but be cautious with natural flavors. Caramel, again, is a mal malted derivative, so yeah. caramel yeah. contains gluten. That's amazing. Um, also, medications and vitamins oftentimes use gluten, so you need to make, make sure you're checking, even with your uh, medication manufacturer, in terms of understanding if gluten is contained in the medication. Lip glosses, lip balms are all co often contain gluten. Play-Doh contains gluten, but oftentimes kids don't, aren't, unless they're ingesting it, are not going to have a reaction. But it, sometimes, as we know, kids are prone to digesting <laughs> or eating Play-Doh. Um, Cross-contamination, you have to be careful in terms of who's, who's using the toaster. If you have somebody in your house that needs to be on a gluten-free diet and you don't, you probably need to use separate toasters because there's, again, cross-contamination living in a home where others are consuming gluten. Is there a problem if you have, you're off gluten but you have cross-contamination, you have, so you come across gluten once or twice? That's one of the things that we're finding more and more is that it's not related to the amount of gluten, it's related to you being exposed to the gluten itself. And so um, it doesn't matter if you have a whole piece of bread, if you have a crumb from a toaster that's been uh, with the gluten, you're exposing yourself again and that response might be even heightened by actually giving up the gluten and then being exposed to it rarely. That's crummy. Yeah, it is crummy. <laughs>